Hey, welcome to the closing beat, everybody. Happy, happy m Tuesday. It's Tuesday. That's right. How's everybody doing out there? Welcome, welcome. Hey, uh, this week a uh, little different. It's uh, we're, we got a birthday celebration uh, for me and the missus coming up uh, later this weekend, and uh, it's a complete surprise. It's pretty good. Ah, trying a new mic too. No. No. Okay. Well, anyways, uh, we. So it's a complete secret. Nobody knows. Well, my daughter knows and my wife knows, right? But everybody in the office has no idea. And everybody else here is, you know, uh, family. So they're all going. Everybody has no idea. Managed to keep it a secret for months and months out there. So really excited about that. Anyways, uh, we'll get started here. We're trying a different mic, so it's probably not going to sound amazing. Uh, but, you know, keep me posted. We'll, uh, we'll address it as we go. Trying to fix it so it doesn't do that crap that it normally does there hey last week in our uh, wine and wealth we covered a bear market all the stats wrapped around a bear market there and uh, i'll share a little hint of, of what we talked about there here is one of the um uh, i made this slide for you or cody made this slide for you but this is one of the data points what does the s p do a month after hitting down 20 percent? so we looked at every single time the markets fell 20 percent. we put that there and uh there you go i mean you can see that over the next month there's some pretty impressive moves. The average gains 3.82%, but there's some pretty impressive moves there. And so to see what the market's done here lately, it, you know, we didn't even hit down 20%. So really not that, uh, you know, really not that big of a deal, right? In terms of seeing what's happened there. And we've talked about the market being over uh, extended to the downside. I'm going to share a little bit more of that with you here as we go. Uh, also, we're going to try the live chat scenario in the dojo. So we're going to see how that goes. That could be a complete disaster there, but uh, we're going to give it a shot, right? So people, you're in the dojo, you want to ask questions, we'll be there. Also below on the right-hand side of your page there, uh, we're going to post our FinTips videos for the week. So you can check them out. Uh, there's a, our free videos, of course. They're on YouTube every day. And uh, just thought, hey, that's a good spot to put it. That way you know what's, what's coming up. If it's something that interests you, maybe you will check it out. If not, uh, well, you know, that's, uh, maybe that's not interesting to you. Anyways, all right, here we go. So we're going to talk about the uh, S&P, the massive mean reversion here. If you go over to the charts, we talked about this early last week, how even just a little mean reversion would seem like a massive rally. And it really was. I mean, it was a very impressive rally there. Um, now, if we take a look at some things here, just to make this kind of brief and quick for you, I'll go back over here and show you this price relative to the 50-day moving average. This is a chart that basically shows you the spread between the price and the 50-day moving average. If it were at zero, that would mean price is right at the 50-day. If it were above it, it would mean it's moving away from the 50-day. Well, as we have here, we just fell to the second furthest or the second most extended that we've been uh, in recent history, right? So looking back, we could see, okay, only COVID did we get more extended there. And so, of course, we bounce, right? Uh, so I just wanted to point that out. In the last 30 years, by the way, I zoomed out even further, there's been no other time we've been as extended. We just beat out that, uh, that sort of 2018 pullback that we had. But other than that, look at we've never been that extended. So you just lived it. You just went through it, the stock market falling fast, uh, the second fastest that it's ever fallen and the furthest away there. So there's still really no reason for the market to find itself meaningfully higher other than being oversold, right? That's it. It's just an oversold bounce. That's what we have here at the moment. So be very careful, I think, if you want to start getting excited about, you know, the market's going to highs and, oh, my God, I'm going to miss out. Really? It, any, is there any good reason? Nothing just yet that I can say. Uh, anyway, so that's the S&P. If we look through the S&P here today, uh, mixed bag, right? Mixed bag. You had your alphabet higher on the day, mean reversion, right? Amazon really mean reversion. That was really extended from the 50-day. Imagine if we took that study and we just did it stock by stock. Well, you'd find that a lot of those are very extended, but we didn't have everything today. So the market tried to go positive a couple times, just couldn't hold on to it because you didn't have any excitement from Apple. Uh, you didn't have any excitement from uh, Microsoft there. So it was really difficult to get a meaningful uh, meaningful rally going today. And that's okay there, right? 
No real big deal. One of the things that I pointed out in our notes from Jazz email that I do every week is the mean reversion rally in the Dow. Holy cow, was that a rally? Back to the 50-day moving average. And if we take a look here, I'll go a little bit further for you. Uh, well, we gained 6.2% in the Dow last week. Well, here is the entire history of the Dow. And we said, what's the average annual return? Because 6.2% seems like a lot for one week. The average annualized return, 5.46% for the Dow over its entire history. Not cherry picking anything here. Just give me the whole thing. Uh, 6.2 in one week. We gained in one week more than we usually do in an entire year. You are living in volatility land. That's the very definition of volatility. Hey, the market can move that fast in one week when it normally doesn't do that in an entire year, uh, post that type of gain there. Uh, it's just a fun way to look at it there. So I wanted to point that out to you. Uh, other than that, if you look around uh, the Dow, it wasn't too bad of a day. It's just that we had some of the bigger names tug on you there. Oh, sorry. Uh, you got Nike up 2.4%. That's mean reversion there. Disney trying to give you a little bit of a bounce as well, that much needed bounce. But unfortunately, some higher priced names, Salesforce, weak, uh, at least during the trading day. It's up after hours anyways. But uh, United Healthcare was weak as well. Um, and that's a $496 stock. Remember, the Dow is price weighted. So he who has the highest price has the highest weighting on the Dow. And so if you were to look at the Dow as a whole, United Healthcare moves the Dow, right? Goldman Sachs is second place, 326, and Home Depot comes in third at $302. So if those three stocks have a really bad day, really doesn't matter what the rest of the Dow does. Uh, that's how you have, that, that's what's going to happen there. Uh, anyway, so that's what's going on there. Uh, I want to point out uh, bonds uh, sold off a little bit more here today. Gold sold off a little bit more, a little bit of volatility in uh, gold. Uh, small cap stocks, by the way, if we could look at small cap stocks, they did reverse uh, last week. They participated in the rally just like everything else, but we're not sure there yet, right? That's, that's where the most weakness has been. Uh, so I too soon to say anything, I think, for small caps to see if they're out of the woods there. All right. Oh, that brings me to oil, right? That brings me to oil. Beware the energy sector here, right? I want to share something with you here. Oil prices are up uh, as of the end of last week. There was five weeks in a row. Uh, 11, uh, we're 11 of the last 13 weeks, we've been over $100. That's kind of easy to see right here, right? So we've been staring at $100 a barrel oil for 11 of the last 13 weeks. That's pretty tough there. This type of extension, um, it's hard to go against, uh, to, to bet on it going down. But boy, when it falls, it falls quick. Just look over here. When it gets a little extended, it can suck it right away from you like just so quick. Uh, if we were to look at the last time oil had such a meaningful move, that'd be uh, as we went back into the 2008, 2009 era there, uh, we ran back above $100 a barrel. The high was 133.93. Look how quick it took it away from you, right? So timing of finding that pullback in oil, I wouldn't try to do it. But when it does, you've got to be ready for it to move really, really quick there. Um, also, if we look at the energy sector here, um, this is a fun way to look at this. I'm not saying this means anything in particular. I'm trying to you know, make you scared or anything like that. If we look at price relative to its 200-day moving average, so more of a longer-term view rather than the short term, look at the price versus the 200-day. Again, if uh, price, the line, was on zero, that would mean that Currently, you look at a chart, the XLE would be right there at the 200-day. The price would be right at the 200-day. Uh, you can see when it gets extended to the downside, it likes to reverse, of course. That's the COVID drop there. But look where we're at. We find ourselves now 30% higher uh, over that than the 200-day moving average. Just say, like, is that odd? That's all I want you to ask. Is that odd? Is it rare? Is that something I should be nervous about? Do you see any other time where that's happened? Right? Now, we haven't gotten back to all-time highs yet, but... We are very extended here in energy there, uh, so you got to be really, really careful with this one. Uh, also, it's traded at least 20% above its 200-day moving average there for half, 50% of all days in the last year. So over the last one year, if you bought XLE, you paid 20% more than the average, right? That's one way to look at it there. So really, really interesting and not sustainable not sustainable anyways uh that's that one hey we'll do something different you, you guys up for that you want to try something a little bit different here today 
Um, I was in a visual mood last night, and I thought, well, let's share this, some interesting things here. One of the things that I do, uh, so I like to watch everything, anything and everything, but it's very tough if you're not very organized. So one of the ways I do it is I organize by industry, and I color code those um, the, the different performance dates, right? So that very quickly I can scroll through a whole bunch of different industries, not sectors, and I can see if something's changed. So I wanted to share that with you because I noticed that solar stocks are actually sort of waking up. And I noticed it because all I did was look really quickly at this graph that I put together, basically. So every morning, I basically, I get an email that does this. And here's what we've got. I've got one day performance, one month, year to date, and one year. Now, most things that you look at are going to be solid red here. Obviously, everything's pulled back, right? But look what's happened here. This is Friday. So on Friday, you have a pretty impressive run in the solar category. Notice that it's not just one name. So we can't, we'd normally say, oh, that must be earnings or something unique is happening there. Nope, it was everything. So it was an industry-wide participation there. Over the last month, that has been happening day by day. More and more progress is being made there. Again, not one stock is leading the way. Just kind of a group all as a whole. Uh, just the ones that I have on the list here. Year to date, they're recovering from a lot of their losses. And same thing over the last year. But remember, last year, solar stocks, a lot of them had great moves. So it wasn't until the sell-off this year that things started getting weak. So one thing that we can look at here is, hey, something's happening. Solar Edge is one that we own, you know, end phase and things. And so I already know that. But now I can look at it and go, we've got help. Right. So in the solar space, it's not just being a stock picker and going, oh, I got a good one here. Oh, Sunrun. I was having a great move. No, no. Everybody's interested in solar now. Over the last month, everybody's moving to solar. That gives you a reason to look more more uh, deeply into what's going on there. Right. So I can go through industries really, really quick like this and it kind of get a good view of what's going on. Sometimes it, I'm doing this because sometimes over the summer, things get slow. And I'm trying to get in the habit of saying, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to teach you something new rather than just spit out whatever stocks did for the day because you all could do that. Uh, so that's one way. What's one industry that you can't say is waking up? Pot stocks. Holy cow, man. They're trying here and there, but notice the difference, right? You've got one day performance. That was horrible for them. Horrible for them. But it's a mixed bag. So there's nothing uniform about money flowing into pot stocks at the moment. Over the last month, uh, for whatever reason, these guys are standing out a little bit. It gives you a reason to look into one stock if you're interested. Over the last year, or through this year so far, and over the last year, decimated, right? So there's no need to say, well, hey, over the last year, they're highly discounted. Is there some action happening over here that says that maybe it's worth buying a discount? No. Very quickly, you can look at that and go, next. <laughs> All right, I'm going to move on. I'm not going to look at that one there. So think of it that way when you look at, um, trying to organize yourself. What's the fastest way you can organize the most amount of information? And everybody's a little bit different. There's, there's no magic to that. Uh, it just depends on what you're looking at, what's in your portfolio and such. Uh, so just thought I'd point that out. I'm going to watch the comments on this. So if this thing was kind of like, what? That was dumb. Let me know. I'm trying to work in some new uh, teaching things that I can do throughout the summertime as we go. Because we like to teach here. Uh, I'll tell you what. That Bitcoin took off today, huh? Up 10% all in one day. That gets the media attention there. Uh, that was really the only thing, uh, asset class, that was convincingly higher on the day. Uh, but otherwise, you know, obviously severely beaten down and everything there. Looking around the rest of the sectors, uh, not a whole lot. Uh, emerging markets was the exciting move here today, up 1.4%. Uh, and consumer discretionary, which has been really just pummeled. Uh, finally seeing a lot more of its uh, mean reversion as well. Still a long way to go. And uh, that's what you got going on there. New highs and lows for the day. <laughs> 20 new highs, right? Wait for it. Yep, 20 new highs there. 17 of them were energy stocks. I want to point out, they all retraced off of their highs. So today's new high list was about seeing that energy stocks were extended. They all hit new highs, but they couldn't hold it. Today, they all fail, uh, faded back there. You got Diamondback Energy falling about a half a percent. Uh, EOG, same thing. I'm just pointing this out so you can see there's consistency there. Uh, it's not my you know, belief or I didn't claim to notice something that doesn't exist. ConocoPhillips pulling back as well. Uh, Occidental Petroleum, same concept. New highs faded back there. Hess, which happens to be the most expensive fundamentally uh, in the sector there, uh, also pulling back. I would point out uh, Diamondback Energy 
uh, Hess, ConocoPhillips, and Occidental Petroleum rank on the lower end of uh, valuation spectrum there. So you would say, all right, from a PE perspective, these are cheaper relative to the other competitors in their space. I believe Apache, when I last looked at it, this is the cheapest of all stocks. So if you're a fundamental investor, uh, you're looking at things like that, and uh, good luck to you. Uh, so you've got uh, stocks in the news, and I'll take your questions and be on our way. Uh, one of my old favorites, man, Yamana Gold, ticker symbol A-U-Y. This was, when this used to trade in the teens, this was our fun day trading stock. When I used to teach the Chinese, we would, we would day trade and stuff. It was a good cheap stock, moved around enough, plenty of volume and everything. Anyways, they're getting bought out by GFI uh, for a whole lot of money, $6.7 billion, which is... I, it's like 30% more expensive uh, than, it, than it was on Friday. 34, 33, something like that. Uh, so, I don't know. Good for them, but old AUY is going to be gone forever if that deal goes through. Uh, Hawaiian Airlines in the news, they said, uh, we see stronger than expected revenues in Q2 here. That wasn't helpful for the stock today because everybody else already beat them to the punch in the space. Uh, Snowflake, was this the ticker symbol the guy didn't know what they did? Upstart, upstart, that's right, yeah. Uh, Snowflake uh, down 1.7% on the day. Uh, Barron's knows what they do, and Barron says these guys, th they've been kind of hot on the cloud stock space lately. Uh, they said these guys uh, are rather cheap right here, especially after this sell-off. So uh, that's a whole article on what they do and why they're excited about them, but that was pretty much the focus over the weekend for them, if you read that um, publication. Hey, Tesla in the news as well, uh, in Shanghai, uh, this was probably, you probably saw it on mainstream type news there, but uh, they're basically getting back to uh, the levels that they were pre-Shanghai shutdown, remember, not COVID shutdown, uh, 70, 75% or something like that. Uh, so the stock was basically flat today, kind of like the market, not much there. And lastly, there you go, you got your GameStop. Uh, those of you that like your earnings, GameStop set to report... And I'll tell you this, of the last eight earnings reports, it's only been up twice. Does that get you all warm and fuzzy? Uh, yeah, of the last eight earnings, they only beat 62% of the time. This is not a stock that normally gets a lot of attention around earnings, but it does because it's GameStop and all the, the, what, the meme stock traders like that. So anyways, that'll be coming out. Uh, other than that, you've got Capri uh, as well, the designer fashion brand there, Chewy the pet store online company that kills it. Uh, by the way, Chewy is even worse. So I, I don't dislike Chewy in any way, but um, of the last eight earnings reports, it's only been up once on the day that they reported earnings. So not the best of track records there. Network Appliances reports. Uh, PVH is also going to report and Viva Networks uh, for earnings coming out. Remember, it's light earnings uh, season here, just the last of the retailers and everything as we go into the summertime. And tomorrow you've got one, two, three, four Fed members speaking, and uh, they are working for it, man. Which, you know, got to do what you got to do when inflation is doing it to all of us. Uh, anyways, I'll take your questions if you have any, and uh, we'll continue on from here. I did cover everything I was hoping to cover today, and then some. Uh... All right, what, uh, Barons, you like their articles? I like reading over the weekends and stuff because they they get a little more analytical, and I'm into that stuff. You know, the the sort of position hype and things like that. That's not my thing, but I like the analytical stuff. I always seem to learn something. Andrew's all about it, man. GME. <laughs> I must be getting old because when I first heard Diamond Hands, I'm like, what? <laughs> what is that? And I didn't even care to like learn much at the time i just let it go yeah uh you're looking at starting a position in your whp long-term hold with the housing situation what do you think honest uh out of curiosity why would you pick them hmm? and you meant uh i'm assuming you meant whr not uh you meant whirlpool right because you're asking about housing help me out with that one there but i'm just curious why why you picked them uh, what is the average market decline when the second negative GDP numbers come out? Uh, well, that's a good question. Yeah, I don't know off the top of my head, but that's a good one to take a look at, like right from the moment they're reported, even though it's a lagging number. 
That's an interesting one. Uh -huh. uh, I like it. Uh, <laughs> I you know I kind of wish GameStop would like blast off again, just so that everybody would look over there for a little bit, give you something to focus on. Or what was the other one? The AMC, right? Like, what are they doing? Anyways, uh, what do we got here? Why oh, you got COVID, man? You're not invited to my birthday. <laughs> Salesforce does, I believe. You're right, Harry. Uh, you got an order by AMD at eighty. Giovanni, uh, you so meaning um, you still want to add to that if it falls, right? And you you've chosen eighty for the moment. So I'm not a big fan of like placing these types of orders because um, not that it normally happens, but when it gets to 80, if it gets there quickly, you're going to want cheaper. It's psychologically. I mean, it happens every time, right? If it falls tomorrow, let's say they just say something like our earnings are going to suck and we already know it for some reason. It starts falling. There's going to be a news event that takes you down there. You're going to start thinking, maybe I should get 75. So I don't know why it would go to 80 without some kind of news anytime in the short term here. Um, I, I think ultimately you'll, you'll, you might have to raise that price. Um, oh, you, you're talking about Whirlpool there? Uh, that's why you picked them? So you like the discount there, not worried about any of their uh, costs. The China tariffs, if they lift some of those, that'll be helpful for them. But uh, nothing as of yet. Um, so I don't really have anything to say you should avoid it. I think if right now there's not a whole lot in terms of like, hey, the market has good news and bad news. And how do I determine what to buy? Right now it's all bad news, right? A little bit of good news if we could just get this uh, inflation thing out of the way and maybe get the economy to officially be in a recession. But with Whirlpool, you go, even the bad news is kind of helpful, right? Because we may have to lift some of the China tariffs, which would actually help them. They've been able to pass on their uh, material costs on to uh, clients for the moment or people that buy their products. So as long as that stays the same, we don't have a problem with it. Hey, I got a friend that made 10X on uh, AMC. You made him sell. <laughs> well, good for him for getting to sell, right? You know how many people say they didn't sell? I have a friend who happens to be a rocket scientist, that is his job by day, who still owns it, and now is just hoping. Like he has no, before it was like, yeah, it's just going up, because everybody said it's going up. And now he's just thinking, well, it's worth something. That's a tough place to be in there. I would not want to be in that position. All right, I will wrap it up there and uh, continue to play with the mic here. I wish you guys a good rest of your day. We will see you tomorrow to do this all over again. Thanks for watching. See ya.